to another episode of Good Libations. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mix mixologist. And as we all know, that's a euphemism for bartender. And we are continuing with our Martini Madness, another episode of such. And one thing that I neglected to mention on the other episode is the fact that there is a controversy about stirred versus shaken martinis. I mentioned a bit about it. But the old theory used to be that a stirred martini, that you had layers of molecules that were getting close to one another, so therefore it tasted better, or that's what W. Somerset Mom said anyway. But again, for our palates nowadays, there tends to be a preference towards a shaken martini, which I prefer myself. And we also talked about the fact that Many people consider the new martinis to be frou-frou martinis or not martinis at all, and some scoff at them. But nevertheless, the base liquor is vodka of some sort, so that makes it a martini. And many of these drinks are very good. Some are a bit too sickly sweet for my palate, but most of them are very good. And again, if you add your own flourishes and accents to them and avoid mixes, and use you know fresh ingredients, then you have a superior drink. And in particular, lemon drop martinis have become very popular, especially over the past decade. But in many establishments, they are made unfortunately with sweet and sour mix and vodka, which is in my view absolutely dreadful. Because sweet and sour mix again contains congeners, and you know high fructose corn syrup in many instances and all kinds of ingredients that are more akin to a chemistry lab than actually to a bar. So when I make my lemon drops I make them a little bit different you know from what they're made in many establishments but of course your high-end establishments will use fresh ingredients also and again many of you are going to say perhaps well I can make a better lemon drop or a better you know, whatever style of martini than you can, and perhaps you can, but again, this is my version of a lemon drop that we're gonna to demonstrate today. But before we get to that, again, we have guests on the show, and the same guests that we had on our previous episode, we have Dave and Nicolene Conway, and we're gonna bring them on. Hi, Ethel. Hello, and Dave and Nicolene Conway, Hi, Hello, our <laughs> unique people in that they are in our community and they also do many things in our community that are invaluable and I think important. At any rate, Dave, um, you've talked about what you do before because you do many right. things you know, for the school district and also specifically things within Monrovia itself. Do you have anything to say as to what you've done in recent times? Well, um, we're working on uh, doing a budget that is uh, difficult because of the state, situ the state budget situation and um, the recession right now. Um, but uh, I get a lot of questions about what people can do to help the schools and uh, the Monrovia Schools Foundation uh, at monroviaschoolsfoundation.org is a place where you can go and look and see what you can do to help. Uh, they're looking for money and they're also looking for volunteers if anybody wants to go to schools. So um, anybody who uh, feels like they would like to help out with the schools and even if you can't afford to pay anything, uh, they're always looking for volunteers. So um, monroviaschools.net or monroviaschoolsfoundation.org. Good to know. And you, Nicolene, also, I know you do things within the community that are important, and you guys have actually done some things as a couple. That's right. Um, we had a chance to actually work on a Habitat for Humanity house in Monrovia. There are four of them, and it was, it was such a fulfilling, rewarding experience. We got to do the sprinkler system. We had so much fun that we actually are talking about trying to find another Habitat for Humanity area where we could work in, because it, it just makes you feel good knowing that these people are going to be able to live in these homes, you know, that really need it. And um, I volunteer with the Friends of the Library in Monrovia, and that's a lot of fun. And um, we, we do little things there, and, you know, it's the only bookstore in town, actually, the Friends of the Library. And then also um, we got a chance to provide dinner last year in Pasadena for um, Ronald McDonald House for families that actually oh, need that it for their worthy. children. So it was, it's very rewarding to do things like that, you know, to see to see the results. And those and are nonprofit organizations exactly, too. Exactly. And you know, personally, 
I'm glad to hear about the library because I have a thing about the fact that books are being ignored nowadays in favor of computers. Right. People are not reading. They're not taking information in via books. And you know, if you're holding a volume in your hand and reading, you, there's the touch that's there. You can even smell the book. You're seeing exactly. it, and to me, it's it's exactly. a whole different experience yeah. from just you know looking at something yeah. off a computer. And you're even recycling. It's part of recycling. Books, precisely. Yeah. Yeah, and those those things to me are are critically important nowadays because it's more of a it's a higher dimension of education and I think a better dimension of education. And Dave, speaking of education, yeah. you're going to have to tell about your experience about winning Ben Stein's money <laughs> because he did. No. <laughs> well, I don't know if you uh, if people remember that show, but it was uh, Ben Stein was a host. Yes. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel was the uh, sidekick, and he's now. Uh, uh, moved on to bigger and better things, but um, uh, I appeared on uh, Win Ben Stein's Money and um, went, uh, did okay, I guess. Uh, ended up in the finals. Um, I beat Ben Stein 8 to 7 in the finals. Excellent. And somehow um, I, I pulled out the Castle Valdus in Liechtenstein, and that's what won it for me. I have no idea where that came from. But um, after I won, he was rather upset because it really was his money. Whatever I didn't win, he was going to get to keep. And uh, <laughs> he pretty much just walked to the back of the stage and kind of stared at the back of the stage for a while after I won. So um, uh, if you know anything about Ben Stein, I was actually very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, anyway, that was a lot of fun. That was a great experience for me. Yeah. I'm sure it bruised his ego, but that was good yeah. for him. He needed that in fact. And our family benefited from his winnings because we actually got we to took take the kids on a trip to New York. We took a trip to New York oh, with the winnings. Oh, that would have been so good. Yeah. And, and my, again, my, my daughter Jennifer actually appeared on the show after I did. Unfortunately, she did not win, but um, oh. I was really hoping for a family legacy of beating Ben Stein. But, uh, <laughs> that would have been good. That was nice. Yeah. And you know, the fact that your family takes trips that are relevant to, to history, oh, yeah. geography, and culture. Yeah. In fact, aren't you going to go on a trip pretty soon that is relevant yeah. to those so our, issues? It's going to be our third trip trip to the nation's capital, um, D.C., and we just love it there. And uh, this time we're hoping to take in um, Gettysburg. Oh, that would be good, because that that's historical. Because you know, yeah, we love history, and we enjoy that. Yeah, and it adds a, a dimension to your exactly. life as well. Oh, exactly. That's and you nice. know, the reason why we're mentioning these things in a show about cocktails is, again, this is relevant to our community, because Monrovia has actually revolved, I would say, or evolved into a community where people are pretty sophisticated um, food-wise, drink-wise. We have establishments in our town where you can sample wines, you know, truly upscale good wines and pair them, you know, with appetizers and cheeses. We have two establishments in town now where you can sample microbrewed beers and imports and pair them with food. So again, this is a community of people, although we are relatively small, that has grown to be pretty sophisticated. Right. And that and has a certain depth Exactly. To it, and we I used to have say. to always go to South Pass, or not South Pasadena, but Old Town Pasadena to enjoy those type of things. But it's actually nice to be in our community where we can walk to and enjoy that right where we live. So it's, I think it's so too. Nice. Yeah, we're having a good yeah, time. Too. And we have upscale chefs at upscale restaurants mm -hmm. in town now too. Yeah. There's so. a dozen great restaurants in town that uh, yeah. people should be going to. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. It's a nice variety. And again, the fact that we have a good library too. Yeah. Oh, I love a big the library. Plus. And what's nice about the Friends of the Library, it's 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 in the library, the, the store itself, but you know, you get to you get books and then when you're done with them, you can give it to them and donate it to them. It's it's a, it's a nice recycling um, thing to do too, you know. So people can have books and you don't have to pay a lot of money. You know, at the bookstores, you can just go right there and, and get the books and share them with everybody. And that's an interesting point, too, because books nowadays can be outrageously expensive. Yeah. So yeah. that's a nice point to know. Yeah. But anyway, we are going to do some martini variants that purists may argue are not martinis, but too bad. They're missing out. <laughs> and again, one that has become very popular is um, the lemon drop martini. And I'm going to make my version of it again which is um, perhaps slightly different from other people's versions and some may say that well you know I would make it differently and so on and so forth but we'll try it out. And you these do people, make a very good lemon drop. 
And you know something too, I appreciate that, but you know, these people, although they sing my praises, can also be my biggest critics too, because <laughs> they're not gonna, you know, be sick of fans and praise something that's not good. They'll that's tell true. me if it's that's not true. good. They will definitely tell me. But again, you know, we have our ice in the shaker, and now we're gonna add some citrus infused vodka. And again, this is not, you know, top shelf vodka, but it's gonna produce a nice drink. And typically in a lemon drop, um, a bit of um, <laughs> triple sec is added. I actually, as a general rule, like to add um, limoncello liqueur, but that can be a bit um, on the pricey side. In fact, I need to add a little bit well, more. Well, tell her when we're in Italy about the limoncello. We got some limoncello oh, in Italy. Uh, did you really? And I bet us. that was wonderful. And it's nice. You can keep it in the freezer. Yes. So and it'll oh, never freeze. It's nice until. And uh, uh, we noticed that when we were in Italy, yeah. a lot of the restaurants they put chilled limoncello on your table it's right like a, at the end of the it's dinner. Like a, it's like a dessert. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And, it's delicious, yeah. Yeah. and it cleanses your palate because yeah. it's not oversweet. That's where we first learned how it. We liked limoncellos from Italy. Yeah, so. And again, that's generally what I like to put in my lemon drop martinis rather than simply the, the triple sec, but not going to do that today. In fact, um, again, squeeze in fresh lemon and plenty of it. And again, you wanna make sure that you're infusing oils, you know, from the skin or the rind of the lemon. And being that this, should, this is going to be essentially two lemon drop martinis, I'm gonna add, you know, another lemon half to it. You're diluting my vodka, Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to put the spent shell, or at least one spent shell in there. And we're gonna add some sugar. And you know, this is just typical granulated sugar. This is not, you know, bar sugar or simple syrup. And in fact, I actually prefer that because it adds a certain dimension to the drink that you're not gonna get, especially off of, you know, commercial simple syrup. Well, you answered my question because I was gonna ask you about simple syrup. Do you use that? You know, sometimes I do, but I make it myself, you know, with sugar yeah, and I kind of boil it down yeah, exactly. and the whole bit. Um, but I never buy commercial sim simple syrup because as a general rule, they use high fructose corn syrup. Not good. Not good at all. And again, what you want to do is you, of course, want a sugared rim with a lemon drop. And if you moisten the rim, you know, with, with the, the lemon, and you know, just kind of twirl it oh. in the sugar, you're going to get a nice sugared rim. And again, this is going to be Nicolene's lemon drop because she is the smoky, sultry lady. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your new logo. How about that? that? <laughs> Smoking sultry woman. Yeah, so again, she's going to try this out. And you can either put a wheel or perhaps a little quarter, you know, of a lemon in your lemon drop. And anyway, you can see if this lives up to all the Ooh, hype. I mean, I'm sure here. it does. I'm sure it does. We hope. <laughs> now Dave gets his chance at it here. Mm. Excellent. Oh, that was wonderful. And again, it makes the difference. How difficult is it, you know, to use fresh fruit in a drink versus a mix? Yeah, you're squeezing the lemon, but the results are so much better. I was going to ask you, you know the flavored vodkas that they sell, like you were just using a citrus-infused vodka? Do they take away from the vodka or do they actually help the drinks? Well, I think they help the drink. And I'm going to have to put your your drink in this other glass here because I neglected to sugar oh, the right, rum. Yes. <laughs> that was bad, really, really bad. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer it, you know, to the properly sugared rim here. As long as you solve the problem, it's not a problem. You got it. And again, you know, if you make a mistake when you're making drinks or whatever, it's not a crisis, you know. It can always be resolved and it can always be fixed. And that's a good thing to know because none of us are perfect necessarily in the way, you know, that we make our cocktails. But anyway, give that a try. Oh, well, it's delicious, Ethel. It's, it's very fresh. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, you know, this is called quality control. The bartender has to make a drink for <laughs> herself, too. <laughs> that's 
delicious. Wow, that's good. Thank you. That is really good. Thank you. And again, these guys are not, you know, little um, sycophants who are going to overpraise my drinks. Mm -mm. They have to be good because if they're not good, they will tell me about it. Mm. We're professional drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> That's our hobby. <laughs> hey, if you're going to have a profession, why not that? Wow. And again, this is quality control. That Citrus sugar offsets it. It's delicious. It does, because I tend to make mine somewhat on the tart side, again, because I, I like don't it. care for the sugar on the rim. You know, the sugar on the rim really drinks. offsets it well, yeah. But, Very nice. Yeah. It's a pleasant, refreshing drink. And it's one of those drinks that you could have any time of the year, too. It doesn't have to be summer oriented or whatever. But it lends itself to a really refreshing drink during the summer. I like how you make the drinks. It's almost like you're on autopilot. You just, you just know what you're doing. You just sit there and make those drinks. And I love it. I have to, to me, look at a recipe, yeah. you know, oh, how much to do this and do that. Cause to me, again, it's almost like chemistry. Gender. Yeah, I yeah. See you're, you're good at it. It's like you're, you're blending ingredients that should marry, you know, nicely. And it's kind of like, it's fun. I, I actually enjoy doing this. It isn't like it's torture or, or whatever. Sugar that rim up. Mm. And yeah, don't forget again, we're out of glasses. Oh. Uh -huh. Well... I'm afraid for that our last delicious. drink, we're going to have to um, perhaps wipe glasses out and, you know, use them, use them that way. Ah. Cheers. I would say to so. To the bartender? Cheers to the bartender. I would say so. Lovely. And by the way, we don't waste. The mixologist. So we're going to have to um, divest what is in here. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, this is a martini variant that some people scoff at perhaps, but it is a worthy drink and it is based on vodka. That's the criteria for it's actually delicious. what a martini it's very is. Good. And martinis have been around since the 1920s, and the 60s was probably the halcyon years for martinis, and then the resurgence in the 90s and the 2000s. Wow, this is but good. Glad you enjoy. Drink responsibly. And it's true. That is really important. And I'm gonna have to send one of you um, off camera to clean the shaker. I'll be more than happy to do that. And then we're going to start on another drink, which is a key lime martini. And you might want to divest your glasses too. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. go ahead. And then we're going to go on to the key lime martini. I can divest this glass in two gulps. <laughs> Me too. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do a simple cleaning of these for the sake of economy on the show. And the same thing with yours, Dave. This way we could get on to our second, you know, drink demonstration. And if you can't finish it... <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Um, I do want to maybe try a bacon martini sometime. Oh, okay. I'll have to take you up on that. I'm a little bit skeptical about that one and sounds need, a little need, dubious, but... Again, I need to work on the recipe a little bit. It's a way too sweet, so oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to, to tweak the recipe a little for that. Absolutely, to make it better. I'll tell you what, to make this easy, go ahead and divest that into this glass right here so we can get on to our other drink demonstration here, which is a key lime martini. Now, a key lime martini, this is a drink that is kind of a drink that I created myself. You can get key lime martinis in, in various different bars, but the way that I make it is a bit different. 
and it produces a drink that is pleasantly tart and just a little bit sweet and as was described it's kind of like a key lime pie and when Nicolene comes back with that shaker we're going to immediately get ourselves into making these here and they involve vanilla vodka, coconut rum, and pineapple juice, fresh lime, and it, again it produces a really interesting result drink-wise. Do you have a preference for brand of coconut rum? You know, Malibu rum is the famous one. You know, I really don't. Um, absolutely not. Um, I tend to buy whatever is on sale and I suggest that in fact to my clients that if they're going to get coconut rum just buy whatever is on sale. Hey thank you for bringing that back oh, sure. and we're going to get right into our key lime martinis and again we're going to fill that shaker with ice and you'll get to see what the basic ingredients are in this particular drink. And Dave, if you don't mind, take it off camera and break it up. <laughs> but in a key lime martini, you're going to use, first of all, vanilla vodka. There's and a little you're going to use there. a coconut infused rum of some sort. And pineapple juice. and a hint of Rose's Lime. And most importantly of all, you're going to use fresh lime. And as a general rule, I will use half a lime, you know, per drink. And again, you know, hand squeezing, I think, is, is superior to using you know, a juicer because you're yeah. not going to get the oils. You know, that's a good thought because I have those juices I bought and... You don't get the oils. Yeah, you don't. Okay, so you get the zest. You get that zest from the... Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, I, and again, I think it's better and leave the spent shell in there and shake it up. It has a good flavor to it. It really does make a difference. I think it does. Yeah. I think it really does. And again, I'm going to do my quality control, first <laughs> of all. Is it worthy? <laughs> I would say it is worthy. It's drink worthy. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to try these out, you know, again, to make sure that they live so up to the These are the, the key lime. These are the oh, key Oh, my limes. favorite. These are my favorite. And we have to add our okay. little flourish here, our little garnish. And for you too, Dave. Okay. And we'll try them out and see again if they live up to what they're supposed to be. You need to fill your cup to your of glass. Of course, of course. And again, there are various different versions of a key lime martini. In some bars, they add cream to it and they use different ingredients. But this is the way I like to make them. No, I, I think they taste good because yeah, they're no cream. No, this no, is perfect the way that, it is. I agree that that would not be my preference. Some people enjoy that. That would not be my preference. To me, it's better, you know, to use these ingredients because you get something that's pleasantly tart, but with a hint of sweetness. And all these ingredients, I think, marry very well. Yeah. You can taste the vanilla vodka. You can taste the coconut rum. You can taste the fresh lime. You can even get the hint of the rose's lime juice, which is a specialty in of itself from the Caribbean. I feel like I'm at the beach and the when pineapple. I smell this, you know? Smell it. That's a good way. <laughs> Smells like you're at the beach. In fact, that's a good way of describing it. In Miami and again, or something. whenever we make drinks, we want to strive for excellence, not mediocrity. We always want to make sure that what we're making is something that reflects our personality, our preferences, but without compromise. And being creative and innovative in making drinks, being a true mixologist, I think is very important. Here we go. And again, 
Good libations. Cheers. <laughs> good libations. Oh you my got goodness, it. it's so delicious. You got it. I told you this is my like favorite it. drink. Yeah, it's like drinking a pie. It's drinking a pie. That truly is Nicolene's um, favorite drink, but without the sickly sweet overtone mm, that you might that get in great. a pie. It's so natural. And because some people do not consider these real martinis again, you have to remember again the base liquor is vodka. So technically it is a martini. And what's wrong with being innovative and going beyond, as they like to say today, the box, and doing something that's a bit more creative and a bit different? It's a good thing, in my personal opinion. But anyway, another episode of Good Libations. And remember again, enjoy cocktails, Enjoy your libations, but drink responsibly. We want to keep Monrovia well spoken of and safe. Thank you again. Bye. That's so good. Mwah. Glad Thank you, you enjoyed. Glad you enjoyed. <laughs>